course, G2 in the driver's seat. We go back to the blue side like game one, and they repeat their bans from that game. Yeah, it looks like things are going to remain the same for the side of G2. Both Galio and Tarek taken off the board. Priority is likely going to be the Jarvan once again. The question is, how will Team Liquid pivot? Will they continue to take the Rakan off the board? Will Silas be the priority? Will Jarvan be taken away? Uh, it's difficult now for Team Liquid, and they're just going to have to go up against something or one of these strong options. Well, it's Akali and Silas off the table, not really willing to trade a jungler for a solo lane pick, and it will be Jarvan taken away. This looks like the exact same draft that I can remember from game one with Jarvan off the table, and Smithy must find a jungler he likes. Team Liquid might change up what's in their bottom lane, and it might be more late game team fighting with that Kaisa hover. Bottom lane has been such a focus for this series so far. G2 have had the advantage back-to-back -back games down there. So double lift on the Kai'Sa once again. Very comfortable champion for him. And Sejuani for X Smithy will be the front line. Does have the possibility of forced hard engages. Wow, and looks it looks like, yeah. like G2 immediately going to go for the Zyra Khan. They actually don't care what they're going up against because with the Galio gone, they're thinking, well, to be honest, you've got nothing that can handle us. Now, there is one option of Team Liquid going for the Morgana right now, or they would likely go for the Brawl. Alice is actually going to be the priority. And even a Syndra in the mid lane. I look for counters in other lanes, not just in the lane with Rakan. Uh, something I thought was going to come through last time around is some burst damage to try and take advantage of the weaknesses of Rakan. Uh, and sometimes we will see champions like that towards the mid lane actually focus on killing him on the engages. But not so far. If we get the LeBlanc ban, actually, that actually opens up even more possibilities for Team Liquid to get that Syndra. I actually really like this draft so far from Team Liquid. It feels like a very Team Liquid draft, already catered towards team fighting. A little bit of scaling towards the bot side of the map, but Kaiser can typically still provide a lot of value. You have this very solid front line with the Sejuani and the Alistair also acting as an engage, and now they can round their draft out with mages in the mid lane, as you were already talking about, Kobe, and they can save that for the final pick as well. So to me, it feels like Team Liquid in this game three are just kind of turning to comfort. It looks like they're saying, we want to play 33 minute team fights here. They remove a team fight mage from Caps saying, no Azir, you can't outscale us in the mid lane. We get first dibs. I want to see if it's Syndra or Lissandra for more engage. Or they index even more onto double if being all the damage output. They've already got Alistair and Sejuani as setup. We'll see what comes through. Vladimir also on the table. A lot of premier team players that Team Liquid love to play are on the table. The only concern for Team Liquid is, are they overstacking on AP damage? There is a lot coming through on the side. I mean, you've got to remember Kai'Sa, while being an AD carry, can still dish out a lot of it. Uh, so the question is, what direction do they go? Blind pick Lissandra with a lot of these options taken off the board. Uh, Team Liquid feeling confident in this pick. Yeah, the Syndra coming in knows it is good against Rakan. Kobe was talking about that one. Now G2 say, you know, Vladimir's really likely on hit. Nico's supposed to be a good matchup into that one. Ooh. What is it going to be? Will it be spicy? Yasuo <laughs> could be very good I in the Syndra. Aurelia has been left up as well, and that could be an incredibly decisive champion. First, they take the Nico. They expect the Vladimir, I think, and again, that is a good matchup in the top side. Yeah, it could be on hit. Could even still be AP. Yeah, definitely good. still flexible here. We'll see what the second pick from G2 is going to be to round it out. Currently, they have a lot of speed for their engage, not a lot of tankiness, so it has to be execution-based. Interesting that they're hovering the pike right now. Uh, I expect the Aurelia to come through. Yep. I think this will go in the hands of Caps in the mid lane. I'm expecting them to utilize the high mobility and the level six all-in potential that Aurelia does provide uh, to not only provide more AD damage to this squad, but also to be one of the main damage dealers moving forward with the comp. Yeah, no surprise here. A big strategy against Syndra, trying to attack the mid lane champion early and often with roams from your jungler and your support. Jarvan and Rakan will try and assist Aurelia in getting kills onto that Syndra early on in the game. Well, we know these teams pretty well. Caught a lot of these picks at the end of this draft here. This is what could be the final game of MSI 2019. And if it is, it's G2 winning 3-0 over Team Liquid. It must be a reverse sweep for it to go to North America's side. More team fight. Team Liquid going back and back to the most comfortable style of competition it could possibly be. It is team fight and late game five on five. G2 have caps on Aureli, a champion he helped make his name on. The biggest thing that TL have to be cautious of is the early game from the side of G2 Esports. 
even though it is harder to play towards the bot side of the map up against an Alistair, do not be surprised. Level four to see Mickey going back to base, roaming mid, grouping up with Yankos, and then trying to find a kill onto Jensen in the mid lane. Exactly. I expect a lot of effort to be put towards wards around the river, and the river leading towards mid lane. One final shot of the trophy. Only one of these teams will get the honor of hoisting it. And odds look pretty heavily that it's going to be G2 Esports from Europe. The five-time LEC champions could be international champions as well. Redeeming themselves from the first few sloppy splits and then a world semifinal beating RNG, an MSI final beating SKT, and now a chance the trophy to beat Team Liquid. That is what is ahead of them. I'm excited Liquid. to see how things pan out in this game three. The pressure is on Team Liquid. A lot of hopes rest on their shoulders. Let's see if they can bounce back as we jump onto the rift. Exactly. Team Liquid, you mentioned the championships of G2, but this team has had a similar percentage of success with three championship splits to their name. Since franchising, Team Liquid has only known success in the North American LCS. And now in the finals on the international stage, this is their chance to prove that what they were built for was not in vain. Exactly that, what they were built for. And that's the biggest thing that I'm looking for for Team Liquid. We know they have the potential to battle the best. We know that they can upset world champions. Let's see if they can do it today as Rakan, that, that sneaky level one play, he's made it into this brush. X Smithy has no idea. And you can see X Smithy taking a lot of space away from Yankos, will be knocked up, but is going to follow up CC. A flag is all it's going to land here. It will chunk him a bit low as he keeps taking a couple of auto attacks. A flash follow, actually, over the wall from Jarvin. Trades those summoner spells. Another aggressive invade here from G2. This time around, even trade, though, with junglers both burning flashes. Jensen gets a little bit of vision of the enemy team. And actually, the fact that he learned Blooming Burst at all, plus the Keystone choice for Wonder, means it is going to be AP Niku, as you called it out, not the Witsend Ruin King rush for on-hit damage. It will be a lot of magic damage, gigantic teamfight ultimates, and Wonder can definitely counter-engage what TL tries to do. Also see Doublelift and Core JJ once again not assisting their jungler, so they should be able to get priority on the lane, and they're already going to start the push off. Very valuable against Azaya Rakan, and I do often like the Alistair into the Rakan pick, because every time the Rakan tries to go in, he's immediately going to get CC'd. And it's something you always have to show respect against, um, which means that this duo of Mickey and Perks can't be as aggressive as they would like. Looking at the stun right now. Scorch can find a little bit of damage. Now the Flagger Dragon's gonna find the first knockup. Ignite is on a double lift, and he has to flash away while still level one. A good start for G2. Here's me saying they can't look to play aggressively. Well, you know what? You can if your jungler shows up at level two. Level two Jarvan Gank off of red buff here from Yankos is able to get the heal first out of double lift, plus still landing the damage of the uh, EQ there and then also getting flash. That is two summoner spells once again flown on the bottom side of the map very early on. Incredible start now. G2 Esports have found a lot of success through Yankos' early ganks. He might be seen coming through. Nice stun right there. Comes out of cap, but will not take that trade. Electric Group pops onto him. Sejuani right behind as well, so that is not a fight to be had. Now Top Scuttle is the battle. Level 2 on both these sides. They've both taken two camps. As Smithy looks to fight now. Yeah, no smite for Smithy while Yankos does has hit, have his, so pretty much no chance to get that Scuttle Crab, and Yankos is going to hold on to the smite and just auto it down. Takes that level three, leeching some minion XP helps that a lot as well. Smithy tried to find something useful to do, but sadly will lose both scuttles here. Only taking small camp so far after that red buff. Jensen spotted out, now a re-engage on the bottom side. Double if still level one, unable to dodge that kind of engage. Mickey and Perks continuing to play on the offensive. Remember that they do have the summoner spell advantage. Double if still only level one, as you talked about freaking. This duo has really struggled throughout this series. So much focus has been put onto trying to shut Here down the core JJ, but now they might finally be able to find something better. There's a flashless Jarvan, but he has EQ available to dodge out of most of these ganks here as there is not an engage to be found on the TL side. Just the blue buff attempt stopped as they take what farm they can. You can see the 23 to 10 in CS down here. Botling is getting smashed. Nick Smithy draws the blue buff into the brush here so that Yankos doesn't have vision of the health. He's sticking around though. Still threatening the TL bottom side. 
Ooh, double lift has been left by himself. Here they go. Level two looking for the engage, but Corner Day is around. They're gonna find the first knockup. Plenty of damage there. Headbutt finds him out of space. And a three-man pull around the first blood still does come through. G2 Esports on the board. Three games in a row first. And once again, G2 successfully shut down double lift. They are making this series impossible for him to play. And now Caps is looking to fight Jensen. And he's got Ignite. There's plenty of damage up, but there the barrier will keep Jensen safe as Caps walks away cleanly after winning trade. Yeah, both holding onto the summer spells. Yanko's passing over a ward, so even though he comes mid lane, Jensen should know his whereabouts. It's Smithy setting up the counter. All right, trying to bait in for the play. Here comes the first stun. Here comes the engaged barrier pop flashing away. Will there be a stun? Can there be an answer kill for Team Liquid? Forcing one flash out. Now they need the stun on the Yanko, so they're gonna find that with all the damage, and Jensen will get on the board. Good use of information there with the ward that Yanko's passes over. Jensen calls X Smithy for the counter play, and Team Liquid gets something out of mid lane. Jungler down. And this is the best situation for Team Liquid to be in after that early deficit down bot. Try and get Jensen ahead. Turn this comfort pick of his into something that can carry the game for Team Liquid. Attempted engage now on the bottom side. Of course, not a lot of health on Perch. Takes some hits, has to walk away. Doesn't find the pull back for the root, so it's an easy disengage now as Mickey X will not find himself in his own engage. This game right now, only 300 separates. It is reasonably close. We can watch that mid lane gank again. Yeah, as expected, right over the ward vision there. So then you call like Smithy, and it is going to be a flash. Bottom side, double lift is dead. They found the ignite. They found the kill. And now Corey Jay must run away. There are no cooldowns just yet, but they're trying to chase him down underneath this turret. Has to flash away from that feather. This lover's duo smashing right now. It's now wonder just out of range of Smithy's stun cannot be caught out. Will walk away with his flash down. Smithy doing what he can to try and help his laners on the top side of the map, but there's nothing he can do about the bottom side as Yankos is now looking for revenge against Six Smithy. Looking for the play. In fact, he does have an empowered heal. He's not going to be able to pop it, just barely puts that in, but oh, that's a flash with two HP left on the health bar, just walking out. Once again, Yankos is on a rampage throughout Summoner's Rift, top to bottom. Now he's still keeping up the dive onto X Smithy. Walks forward, finds some damage, gonna flash in the smite! Oh, it's a couple of seconds bot, though. Impact's gonna stay alive. Now, will there be a repeat heal? Will there be something else as the Aftershock comes in, survives the damage, Jankos at 100, puts the flag down, but will not find the follow through. It is still waves lost to the top side. Advantage again to G2. Exactly, the biggest difference here, Impact does not have teleport, so that is a ton of experience lost. Bottom side, Core JJ goes in for the engage. He's an initial engage by Core, but cannot find the auto attack to stun as he didn't have the time to put it down after the Rampage came in. So another successful trade. And again, 49 to 27, G2 are outperforming this game. So now we get to see what happened to Doublelift. The flash knockup coming through from Mickey when Doublelift still has no summoner spell. The burst from the Lover's Duo was too much for Doublelift to handle and he ends up getting shut down. Mickey has honestly been insane this series for G2. G2, people expected the bottom lane to be their weakness, but they've turned it into their strength. With attention from Yankos, attention in the early game, Perks and Mickey have been outstanding. He's also, Mickey is also a player that Perks has given so much credit towards. This guy has uh, been one of the most consistent, one of the highly rated players in supports of the position in Europe. And he's brought that knowledge to G2. He shared that knowledge with Perks. And while Perks might not be the most experienced AD carry, Mickey is definitely an experienced support. Meanwhile, Team Liquid need to rally around Jensen in the mid lane. The Syndra with the kill, level seven cooldown on the ultimate coming back up this is a possible point for them to get kills x smithy is here find a bit of damage cap still not choosing to go forward there they don't find this opening as that minion walks up it might reveal his location x smithy trying to hide away they still don't have the cooldown on Sindra's ult back up right, they might try for the attempt right here if you can find the qe nice juke by cap but will be hit a little bit nice double sun comes in ult comes in as well he's got a lot of a playground to play around with they find that first stun. they find some damage but ignite means he will get the solo kill to 1v2, and Caps tries it for Jensen, and here comes Mickey! G2 slaughtering Team Liquid! Caps with the monumental outplay. One versus two is able to shut down Jensen and X Smithy single-handedly. That right there is the best mid laner in Europe. Maybe the best mid laner in the world looking at these performances now, looking at more and a double forcing him again to burn both summoners the second they come back up. Team Liquid cannot buy an advantage. And again, in the top lane, Caps is everywhere. This is an absolute slaughter here. G2 dominating all points of the map. Jensen, he goes for comfort with the Syndra. Team Liquid try to play through mid lane. 
but they cannot lock down Caps. The beautiful sidestep to dodge the stun, getting the double stun for himself, and then throwing out the ultimate to get multiple procs of the Q, enable him to get what was a beautiful outplay. Yeah, Caps absolutely insane here, using the mobility of uh, Aurelia, and they pick up the second kill onto Jensen. That was Team Liquid trying to force before the Syndra ultimate cooldown was there because they feel so pressured at all points on this map and they were looking for some area of hope. And now the gold gap is 3.5k in G2's favor. This is what this roster was built to do. This is what it was designed for, international success. Perks wanted more. And right now, they're only one game away from securing it. Such a move from Perks as the captain of the team to be willing to switch roles to make the team stronger and climb to new heights. Now they are at those heights. And G2 looking to put Europe on top of the map. The choice that all these players made, Caps is probably the hottest commodity in Europe, the best mid laner. He says, I will join G2. I will be the cornerstone of this super team that, that completes the squad. And from World Finals to MSI Finals to most likely now an MSI trophy, this team is doing exactly what it set out to do, what all the players promised each other. TL now setting up for a play down towards the bot side of the map. G2 are wary of this because they saw the control wall. They tried to clear it out but they didn't quite have the damage to secure it. So they're now playing on the back foot. Yankos with this information immediately moves up towards top side and starts setting up to secure this return. Pressure continues now across that map as it's a 23 CS lead top side for Wonder with only about a gank and a half even to his name that was enough to just completely push impact now out of this one as he's got pressure. It's a quick buff steal and now an attempted four person dive in caps is his spidey sense tingling. So far, he's just fine, and TL cannot find their opening. Yeah, G2 calling for the missing there from the bottom side. The four-person mid does not work out. Impact on the top side, fighting for some health as well as some minion kills. Another fight now in the mid lane. They get plenty of damage to that Jensen, who has to burn both summoners to get out of that one. I'm just afraid of what uh, Yankos could have done to him. This is the lane going away, and a re-engage in the mid side. They find a stun, stopwatch popped as well. And will it be any kills for TL? Forced outside of the cage, Caps! He will not go down without a fight! Gets the number six kill of the game. So close for Jensen and Smithy, but it is just not enough. Caps is playing out of his mind in this game three. He wants to secure this championship for G2. He wants to secure this MSI title for Europe and they still have so much time to mine turret plate money off of all these winning lanes, winning lanes now. They have all the pressure across the whole map. They have the run of the jungle, and they can use that to increase this to a monumental gold lead. Will TL find the space to answer back? Impact is trying to. He's got to be really careful to disengage. We'll get some damage. Here comes Pop Blossom. A quick heal comes out, and they both stay alive as the flash of their burn ults the same. Impact now with the help lead up top side. Wonder is consistently applying pressure onto Impact. As we now get a replay back onto this mid lane play. So this time around, Smithy is able to block a lot of the damage going down onto Jensen. Caps' ultimate cannot be converted into much. They go for the Woo! gauge and a beautiful flash knockup, followed up by a great return ulti from Smithy. But we have more fighting. We got a return to the top side right now as one auto attack will do him in as Yankos is on the board of his first. Caps yet again. Wits and done. 3 0 and 2. G2 are unstoppable. With both of the mid laners down, G2 can now take these turrets. They're actually taking everything. The red buff here. Well, there's a cow in the way trying to stop Moff. It will be a red buff picked up for X Smithy as G2 walks away. But this top lane is in shambles. The turret is falling. Plate after plate is being picked up. 6K is now the goal lead for G2. They are just snowballing out of control. It feels like that every member is playing at their peak right now. And they are not giving Team Liquid a single chance to come back. 33 minutes and 10 seconds. Anything under that sets a world record for international best of five. They've already taken down Faker and SKT, setting a record on the way to the first European title since 2011 is a great way to cement G2 in history. Well, the Rift is going to help them along with that, Freak. Charge yep. gets off on the secondary turret here, and this might go down. 
Taking a lot of damage. The Herald will fall. Finally, a fight that won. That TL can win. Yanko's drops, but Caps is under the turret! And he gets away with it, too. Finally stunned. A bit more damage in, but he's still not dead. He's still healing. They might have the damage, and finally, he's TL he's down. <laughs> he actually dies. The man is mortal. He can bleed, but so can TL's base. It's already four turrets in 14 minutes. So much gold just got picked up for G2 there, and while Team Liquid finally get the kill onto Caps, what did it cost them, guys? Everything. It's only a moral victory there, as they are finally able to get him, but G2 run the map, they run Summoner's Rift, and they are running this series home. So many fans say that when Caps plays, the gods flip a coin. Today, it feels like that it is a double-sided heads, because this man has been on a tear throughout this series. Claps on both sides right now, happy to step up and completely outperform his opposite member. Beautiful step out of Caps so far. Yankos wonder, the whole lineup is amazing. We can watch that tower dive yet again. All right, so they try and go for Jensen again, missing both the knockup and the double stun. Causes the counter there from Team Liquid. Jensen gets the first kill, ulting onto Yankos. But Caps goes under the turret on Aurelia, making use of the mobility. Then Nick Smithy lands the Sejuani stun off of the passive into the ultimate burst damage. And since Core JJ is there on the Alistar, they are able to finally put him down. If if he had flashed a little bit earlier there to avoid that final order from Sejuani, he yep. may have actually been able to turn that one around with the Wit's Hand heal that was coming out as well. But instead, he takes the death, and now he's looking for double lift. The flash yep. will end up being used, and G2 now yep. forced to play on the defense. Teleport coming in. They also have a roam from Mickey in the river. Into the play right now. Wonder puts in the pop off and gets the shield, finds a single stun. In comes Mickey. Will it be a single kill? Yes, impact is on the board. And can they get a little more? This is the comeback TL needs, but it is a single kill, and it's cut short from there. And the split push from G2. They still have perks on the bottom side at the inhibitor turret. He'll take a fancy recall. He's not even afraid of anyone showing up on him. A stun for Caps. They will keep that turret alive. TL getting maybe the worst of this trade as part of the base is falling away. The reset does come in. Now a potential re they really gonna try this? 3v5, teleport. Yep, yeah, there's no TP for wonders. That would make it really difficult. And instead, they just spot them. They slow down some of the recalls. They look for a stun. I gotta find that yet either. But they're all still in spitting distance. Ult is up for Xmithi. This could be a 5v3. It's a fight that Team Liquid might like to take. You have Core JJ in a brush with a control ward, but a flag reveals him. When's the move forward? Not yet gonna happen. No stun for the Syndra. And the fact that G2 pushed TL back in a 3v5 is evidence enough of how dominant this European squad is. Level 12, Irelia. The ultimates are up and available. Only Mickey's is on cooldown, and the duo of Herx and Wonder were making their way up towards the top side. TL chose not to take that fight. They're forced to disengage, and now G2 grouping up to secure the final Tier 2 tower. Let's knock that one down. Team Liquid are going to be able to watch this one fall. They do put some members around. It is a three versus four. Now it's four with their teammates, and Yanko's coming up. They will clear the wave. They will back up, but there's going to be an engage. Oh, that was just a clone. <laughs> they find the slow. Over the wall they go. Looking for Jensen. Plenty of damage there, but he's going to be fine. Walking away. Look for the stun. Henning predicts the flash. Actually, a good stun there, but no kills to be had. Instead, the base is being seed. They are being taken down right now. G2 unwilling to be stopped. The turret's still in their eyes. Feathers fly, and G2 will pull back. That's a big stun. That's a big engage. Oh, my God. Look at the fight! They look for kill number four. This might be an ace inside of the base, inside of 18 minutes. The main inhibitor will surely fall. And G2 ripped through the hearts of Team Liquid and North American fans as they secure themselves in the top of the world. There is no chance TL comes back from this. They're already on to the Nexus turrets. This is what peak League of Legends looks like, and it comes from Europe, a world record. G2 Esports 3-0 will win MSI 2019.
the first MSI trophy for Europe. G2 Esports. They wait for the rest of the squad. And they wait for everyone to lift it together. G2 Esports, the best team in the world. Your MSI 2019 champions. Europe is now top dog in League of Legends. What a monumental achievement for G2 Esports. Such a huge victory. They fought hard, they had to 